Right now, what I'd like to do, though, is give you just an introduction to what this class is about and who can take it and why and that sort of thing. So in case anybody hasn't noticed, weird times we're living in. Um, this is nature showing us who's really the boss. She's definitely the boss with these types of things. In terms of, I guess it gets back to what Richard Feynman, that Nobel Prize winning physicist said, uh, you can't fool nature. All the politicians, all the scientists were trying our hardest with all of this stuff and the virus is just making a monkey out of all of us. That's the way things are. Can't legislate against things like gravity and all that. Anyway, we are where we are. I'll try not to complain too much about that. I would much rather be lecturing in person. Right now, I don't know if anybody out, is out there. I don't know if anybody is listening to this. I can't see if you're falling asleep. All of these sorts of things, whereas in class, I'd be able to do that. We'd also have a little bit of a dialogue. I could ask things. I could target this to the level of background knowledge that you have. It's not possible this year, unfortunately. So we'll have to try to make do with this sort of thing. In terms of the actual class overview, I will jump to here and that was supposed to be up. That's just my cheat notes for doing Panopto recordings. Maybe it's in here. Yeah. So the course, um, as you're watching this lecture, you probably are very aware of this. The course is chemical pharmacology. It's a supplementary subject in from the chemistry department. There are historical reasons for that. My name is Grant Churchill. I'm in the Department of Pharmacology. The course is offered through the Department of Pharmacology, but officially it's tied in with the Department of Chemistry as a supplementary subject. It's designed overall to be a course for chemists, but because it's a supplementary subject course, the university allows other people to take this course. So generally we will have about a third chemists taking it, a third medics taking it, um, and then the rest will be biochemists, biomedical sciences students. Last couple of years, we've got a lot of biologists taking it. Historically, there have been some physicists, some mathematicians. Again, if we were doing this live, again, I'll try to stop dwelling on this. If we were doing this live, I would ask for a show of hands so I get a feeling in each year who's taking the course, and then I can sort of tailor it. I can make it bespoke. If it's a lot of chemists, I can explain the biology concepts a little, little cl more clearly. If it's mostly biologists or biochemists, I can go into other aspects. This year I'm flying blind. I have no idea. So I'm just going to base the way I deliver it on past years. We'll see how this goes. Um, in terms of this year, it's weird not just because of COVID and uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus. It's also a little weird because I'm technically on sabbatical. It was a crappy year to choose to go on sabbatical because I had all these grand plans. I was going to go up to a former student's uh, lab in Cambridge who is a principal investigator at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology, this Nobel Prize generating place. Um, I was going to see if I could disrupt his lab, do lab experiments. I was going to go to Singapore. I was going to go to back to Canada for a while. I had all this plan doing bench work. Uh, COVID just shut that down. Again, nature shows us who's really boss in these things. When I went on my sabbatical, it normally gets you out of all your teaching. This course I started in like 2004, 2005. And it's near and dear to my heart. And I really am passionate about it. I believe in it. I get good feedback from students. So it's something that I really wanted to still provide. Then COVID struck and the administrators were all giving me grief as to how am I going to do exams and how am I going to do this and that. So I just said, okay, too rich for my blood this year. I'm on sabbatical actually. I don't want to do the admin stuff. I'm more than happy to teach. Don't want to do admin stuff. So it was canceled for a little while. So you might have heard it was canceled. Then Liliana, this person here, got her arm twisted probably quite hard and she had to do the organizing. The organizing stuff of this is always the worst bit. The teaching's the fun bit. You get to think about chemistry and biology and all these things. The organizing really sucks. So 
my I'm indebted to Liliane for stepping up to the plate and doing the organizing this year. It, it's it's going to be a nightmare. Normal years, organizing other lecturers is like herding cats. This year, you layer COVID onto that. You layer the exam situation onto that. It's not going to be a fun year. So I'm glad I'm out of that. I just get to do the fun stuff. I just get to talk about some of the things that really delight me. So um, you can read through this. I won't read through it for you. Uh, yes, there is COVID going on. Hopefully you can see my cursor with this. Uh, who can take the course? I've covered that. Um, format. Most years, it's, I, I, I used to say I, when I organized it, and I will organize it next year again, that it's about 16 lectures. This year, because some lecturers didn't want to do it remotely, we're down to 14 lectures, 14 lecturers. And there's two practicals. I used to do a practical called the rat uterus practical, where we'd look at things that would contract uterine smooth muscle, like when a female goes into birth, you have to expel the fetus, that smooth muscle contraction. Think of the uterus as a hose and it contracts and the fetus gets expelled. We did a practical with that where I show you a, a rat, I dispatch the rat, I would then cut up the tissue, you'd help me string it up, we'd put it into organ baths, we'd do all that. This year that's all off, that's just not going to happen unfortunately. So the practicals will be all online as well. So unfortunately that's the situation we're all dealing with. We are trying to make the best of it. We'll see how this goes. Examination. This is what, unfortunately, my heart sinks when it comes to this. I wish we could just provide information and nobody got tested on it. Um, this is my view of the world. It's a warped bit of my brain. I think information for information's sake, people want to learn or not learn. If you want to win pub quizzes, go and play a pub quiz thing. To me, marks are nothing more than results from a pub quiz. The people that are really interested in the genuine information are going to do well. Having a degree or not, being at Oxford or not, you look at Elon Musk right now, he's doing fantastically well. That's the type of thing, what you can do with information. You look at Steve Jobs, these types of things. Anyway, I know the reality of this situation, even though I believe in something a bit different. So in terms of examinations, there'll be a lot of exams, old exams online. If you go to WebLearn, it was the predecessor to Canvas. Look at WebLearn. You can see all every exam going back to when the course started was there. The initial few years, it was hit and miss. I was experimenting with different exam styles. The chemists went crazy. They really hated essay exams, so we got rid of those. It's all short notes now. Um, two questions per lecture, so it covers the whole breadth of the course. And it, well, you can look at the old exams. I'm not examining this year. The exams will be in that flavor though, so you can look at that. You have to register by the exam, for the exam, if you want to take it by, it's usually about mid-January, so that's like coming up soon, that's like this week, if you're watching this on first week. So you have to register. If you register, you can still register like up till the day before the exam, uh, but you will be imposed a penalty charge of like 25 quid or something like that. You can also withdraw from the exam. It's a supplementary course. It's voluntary. voluntary. You don't have to do this. So you can withdraw up to the day of the exam. It used to be if it was physical exam, you just didn't show up and nothing bad happened. If you do sit the exam, whatever mark you get on that exam, it will show up on your records nowadays. So just bear that in mind. The other thing is, a lot of students take this class, so the medics and biomeds get like 0.5 of a percent if they pass and 1% if they get a distinction. That's all well and good, but if you just focused in on your normal coursework, getting 0.5 or 1% is a hell of a lot easier than taking a whole supplemental subject in chemical pharmacology. It actually will take some work. You actually have to like chemistry and biology to do well in this. You actually have to understand that uh, at that interface. And it's not easy. Um, I love this stuff and it's still not easy. I, I spend my life thinking about the world at the interface between chemistry and biology, and I still find it challenging. But when I did 
mark exams over the last 15 years on this, it delighted me and humbled me. Students, you guys would do fantastically well thinking about this interface. So if you want to take the exam, it's up to you. That's the way it is. Lots of old examples. Some students every year, there's usually about 10, 15 students every year who just take the course and don't actually take an exam. It actually, that's more in tune with the way my brain works. When I was a student at your level many, many years ago, I was probably of the same mindset of most students. It just Give me stuff to memorize, I'll memorize it, I'll regurgitate it at the exam. It's not ideal. It's a very shallow way of learning. We, I, I would rather now strive for... I'm, I'm already having panopto problems. It just kicks out and then it gives you a message that it hasn't been recording. And it takes forever to edit it later anyway. Such is life now. When I get to the actual lecture, I might do it through a different mechanism. Anyway, in terms of the topics of the lectures uh, this term, uh, I designed this course with a lot of topics that I found really interesting. So it was very self-indulgent. There were things that I wanted to think about. So I'm going to, in, at least in my lectures, you get very much a view of the way I think about the world in, in terms of that interface between chemistry and biology. So I'm going to give you Today's lecture will be on drug targets and mechanism of action, then receptor pharmacology, then pharmacokinetics and drug metabolism. I think this might be a little... Uh, Trevor might still be there. I might be replacing him on that one. Then we go through all these different things, and you can read about it. I'll also give you electron anesthetics, which will be local and general anesthetics. And then the other thing I'd like to just highlight is in eighth week, I'll do a live session on Teams. Um, it says exam workshop, can we answer the questions? I'll grab a past exam and we'll just go through it. And um, we'll, we'll get student input. Hopefully we'll see if you guys are that cooperative. Otherwise I'll go through and give my shot at this. Um, the exam is not, the exam will be challenging and it will, test you, there is not necessarily correct answers for this. We want to see how you think, not necessarily that you get to the right answer. Uh, you could memorize, let's say, the number pi to 90 decimal points or a million decimal points, but can you use pi to calculate geometry, geometrical problems involving a circle? That's a true understanding of the number pi, versus just memorizing it and regurgitating it. We'll try to tap into that with the exam as well. So some people will have very different answers and they'll all be equally excellent and get high marks for them, even if technically they're not absolutely correct because we wanna see how you think. There's hypotheses, biology is all about hypothesis testing. So if you've got a good hypothesis, good reasoning behind it, you'll do well on the exam. Um, so with that, I guess, good luck to everybody. I hope you enjoy the course. These days you can listen to like 10 minutes of this and think it's for me or it's not for me. Kill the whole thing. If you like thinking at this interface between chemistry and biology, hopefully this will be for 